Oh well, guys, we're out with the uh, 200 to 600 G lens on the A7R4 and uh, I'm going to just have a little wander through these woods here and uh, see what I can capture. I'm just going to do a mixture of photos, so everything from leaves to uh, wildlife and stuff like that. It's uh, quite interesting. There's a few more bluebells in here still. There's some fungi on the tree there. Um, is kind of interesting. Get a few pictures of that in a minute. Sun has gone in, so this would be a good test on what ISO the squirrel, what ISO and um, shot speeds I can get with the lens. So that'd be interesting. Uh, Stabilisation. I've just taken a couple of pictures of some white bells, so blue bells and white bells, um, and. Uh, Stabilisation is rock solid. Literally touch the button, boom, and it stables anything instantly. So that's good. Um, so we're going to have a little wander down here. A little experimentation. And I shall add some pictures into the video. Um, usability, it's not too heavy. It seems to be... Well, I can hand hold it one hand. Quite steady, no trouble at all, just by a couple of fingers underneath. It's a couple of kilos, plus the body. So, not that worried. Um, obviously still got the RX10 Mark IV, which uh, obviously has its uh, huge benefits of portability and a slightly faster lens, as in a 4. So you can get a bit more light in, a bit more shutter speeds in sort of a, a dull a day. So this should be quite good. Um, obviously this was a full frame sensor as well. Um, obviously I think I've got, if you go into crop mode, you end up end up with a uh, 800 odd millimetre lens, so in theory. But to be honest, I just shoot full frame most of the time, crop in and out as I need. So very rarely use that, but it just gives you another bit more, uh, a closer view if anything, if you need to. Right, I'm going to walk up this path and uh, see what I can find. Anybody recognise that sort of animal noise? Interesting to know. I think it's now dead. So looking at a couple of the first shots I've taken, this one's of, of a leaf. Really sharp, but I should have stopped it down to like f8, f11 or something like that because it's just a little bit too shallow and a few bits are out of focus. This is a first sort of trying to track a swallow or house martin going flat out. Um, very difficult to do and my shutter speed was too slow. Didn't have the right mode on the lens at the time so then they're in focus but they're blurred due to motion blur. Um, white bells, same again I should have stopped the lens down slightly. Um, at its minimum focus, this is a 600mm minimum focus, 2.4 meters. the depth is very shallow and there's not enough in focus. Same here with these blue bells, one blue bells in focus could have done with a few more, a little bit more depth in there. But learning curve, it's the first time I used the lens, same as this here. I, for some reason I focused on the left hand leaf um, down slightly um, and then retook it as this one's better. Um, looks really nice, the background's nice and soft, um, the leaves look sharp. So a couple of kind of boring shots but I just wanted to see what the difference was, like shadowing, sharpness and stuff like that for this tree here. Same with this, um, some ivy growing and the bark and everything like that. Just looking at the way things work especially in the uh, the wood there where I was down to sort of one two hundredth of a second at ISO 100 or 200 um, pretty boring shots this shot here was 200 millimeters f5.6 ISO 100 um, and this is at the 600 millimeter difference I just want to show you the how much zoom you've kind of got so that kind of gives you a ballpark figure Alright guys, back again. Um, sun's come back out again. It's gone in for a long time. As you can see, many clouds. It was uh, well, actually a good test to see what you can get away with. Um, sort of ISO 400 most of the time. It actually was still giving me quite a good shutter speed. Um, up to 1000 was giving me I think 1250 for the second, which worked quite well. Um, yeah, liking the lens. 
you are a little bit restricted on obviously when you're back at 200 and your closest focus distance is something like two meters or 2.4 meters at 600 anyway and so that camera restricts you slightly but generally pretty good also focus works rather well on the a7r4 um, not had any issues with that at all it's locking onto birds and stuff quite easily um, basically just uh, it's a good lens the only thing i will say is i'm quite strong and i'm definitely noticing the weight um, generally because i've been used to the rx10 mark 4 for a bit um, now and got rid of a big lens but it's not that bad it's um, hand holdable i mean i've been out two hours now and uh you know you're carrying it that's for sure but it's not really bothered me that much uh, stabilization works very well instantly uh stabilizing your, your footage as soon as you touch that shutter button um to, to focus and everything it's instantly uh, uh stable which is great um liking the where the only restriction on the rx10 mark 4 obviously all in one camera is that once you're focusing you can't zoom in or out so obviously benefit of one of these you've got manual zoom in and out which you can move in and out as you fly which is great um other than that build quality is good um no other issues really i mean i think oh, it was a squirrel hang on yeah sorry that was a squirrel but he was too far away really i mean he was about 70 feet away um and he, he spotted me as well um only thing about this white lens it's quite obvious when you sort of wave it around a bit so i might actually get one of the camo um, neoprene covers for it. I'm not sure what they're like. They're about 30 quid um, Which seems quite reasonable um, Spotted one on eBay might just order it and see what it's like um, even if I just used it on the um, The lens cow or the lens cover Or lens hood rather um, Rather than the rest of it. It just dulls it down a little bit if anything also protects the end from bashes and knocks and things like that so Hi right, guys, here's a closer look at the lens briefly. Build quality is very good. Well, like I said, I think I'm going to buy the neoprene. A little bit of camo for it, just to dull it down a bit. One, obviously to protect this coating. And two, just to dull it down, because it's, I mean, if you look at it now, it sticks out like a sore thumb. <laughs> and that's definitely spooked a few uh, animals. I'm wearing sort of browns and dark green at the moment. So, you know, I blend in a little bit with the background, but this is about, it's like having a torch. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'll order that later on. Um, works really, really well. I'm very pleased with it so far. Um, I've struggled to keep up with the swallows flying around. I'm not sure if I've got a couple of good shots or not, but they are blasting around at some speed. But the problem is they change direction very quick and I'm still getting used to using the lens. So, um, and the light is pretty crap. It's now cloudy, it was lovely this morning. Um, the lens arrived and I thought, oh yes, it's sunny, it's beautiful. But within 20 minutes, the clouds started to come in. So hopefully tomorrow I can get out again and uh, try and get some better shots and go from there. So yeah, build quality is very good. Um, I saw someone had a problem with this blocking mechanism here um, when they reviewed it um, early on, um, saying that the collar carried on spinning around. I think it was DP review, something like that. Um, but this is solid as a rock, this one. So I think they may have adjusted it or uh, obviously known about it and on the pre-release versions and sorted it out. Um, but very, very pleased, very, very good lens. Um, you are obviously just restricted from 200 to 600. Um, no real drama with shutter speeds. I've been shooting anywhere between ISO 100 and 400, up to 1,000 if I really wanted to get up to the one two thousandth of a second kind of thing. Just trying to free some of the fast flying birds, but other than that, ISO 1,000 is nothing in okay light anyway. So, But hopefully sunshine again tomorrow. Um, I can actually get some uh, better shots with better lights, but at the moment um, it's not all that amazing. Um, the birds are chirping, but where I am, the birds are not very human friendly they, they sort of spook very very easily and disappear um, they don't get fed or anything like that they're proper wild animals so they don't um, don't hang around when humans are nearby so you have to be very discreet and that's the drama of this lens being bright white so one nice thing about the uh, two rings is the focus one is very smooth the zoom one is very smooth and very light as well and the fact you can go 
from 200 to 600 in sort of half a movement, half a wrist turn, which is really, really good. Um, very easy to use. You've got your custom buttons all over the place on the lens. You've got one, two, there's three. One at the top, one at the bottom, one to the left-hand side, not on the right-hand side. Um, obviously you've got your locking uh, knob there for the uh, the ring and uh, the tripod mount. And all your buttons here. Obviously you can change autofocus, your focusing range, so full 10 metres to 2.4 metres or 10 metres out to infinity and your steady shot dial there as well. Um, and also your um, modes 1, 2 and 3. Got it on 2 at the moment for panning. So tracking speed, this is where I'm having to learn again is having used to the smaller RX10 Mark IV, you can move it much faster. This, uh, this larger lens on the camera here, it, it's trying to track other birds moving at 50 mile an hour, whatever they're doing, is quite difficult. So I've just got to work on that technique. Um, the other downside of the having a large lens with massive magnification and a very high megapixel camera is any sort of over, over movement can cause um, motion blur or, dis or distortion in your shots. This shot here was actually, even though it's got a green haze, it's actually shooting through a load of leaves. So it's still focused on the bird quite happily. This shot here is better. Um, it's quite nice, I actually quite like it because the way the, the leaves are slightly out of focus or in focus and whatever, it looks, it looks quite cool. Um, this shot here managed to get quite close to this one and the next shot as well. Unfortunately, bleached out cloudy skies, um, which sucked, but just testing out the lens really, just getting used to it, getting used to the fact that any extra movement can cause you problems. Blur, stuff like that, you know, it can cause you issues. Same here, trying to track this bird um, is just difficult, especially the speed they're going. And as they, if they go up into the sky, it's much easier because you can see them. This sort of here, I took quite a few to get this. Um, not too bad, but still too far away. I wasn't zoomed right in to 600 because you just can't move quick enough. This shot was better. Um, A7R's, A7R4 is keeping up quite happily. It's not really that, that's the issue. It's a case of I've got to move faster, I've got to have faster shutter speeds and have the lens in the right mode. This was a starling that was going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, uh, feeding its chicks. Um, so I knew where he was going each time, or her, and uh, got a couple of shots there, which wasn't too bad. The sun was popping out occasionally, um, so it had a little bit of extra light, but not too bad. And the background blurs out quite nicely. This is a, a bug of some sort covered in pollen, um, just to give you the, the kind of the smallest thing you can kind of photograph easily. Um, blackbird having a little drink out the uh, water bucket there. Um, sort of stayed stationary a bit and had a little wander around as well. But again, that stuff in the background wasn't that far away, so it still blurs out the background nicely. Same with this with the horse focused on the eye um, and the back and the side of the head, and then you've got some nice background blur, which is uh, quite cool there. Um, and then quite easy to get nice sort of headshots of horses and stuff with not too much. Uh, not too shallow a kind of shot, so that works quite nicely. Birds again, larger birds, uh, very easy to uh, hold on to. The smaller birds are a little bit more difficult, just because they're harder to catch because they're so quick. This one here, um, absolutely fine, quite like it. It's just about a jump, and the next shot is actually launched and the wingspans are right open. But unfortunately, I didn't lock onto his uh, uh, face or the eyes. Uh, it went to the wing. Uh, so it's actually a softer looking uh, face and, and head. Here's the blackbird having a little dance around. Just thought I'd try the video out a little bit. Unfortunately, I was stupid and I was literally leaning on a post. And so it's, that's why it's wobbling around a bit. because I actually had less movement ability than I would do if I was hand-holding. So next time I'll hand-hold it and try that try that out. But all in all, very impressed with the lens. Like I say, it's just a little bit of acclimatisation going back to a large, heavier uh, full-frame large lens uh, some bokeh balls so I just wanted to see what the uh, the rear um, blur was like and they are relatively round actually uh, that's at um, 200 millimeters that was and this is at 600 millimeters so slightly oval but not that bad actually still quite a tr quite nice um, appealing uh, shot there um, and a uh, pine cone there or whatever they're called um, just fell down so I picked it up and put it on the post shows you how much you can actually blur the background same as this shot here with the uh, dandelion so um worked really nicely very impressed with the lens so far um let's say first time i used it literally had a little walk 
tried it out and uh, just had a mess around with it and just getting used to using it so um, anyway guys don't forget to click the subscribe button and the little notification bell and there'll be another one coming in the next day or two because I'm going to get back out again where it's actually sunny hopefully and uh, now I'm getting used to it uh, hopefully get some better shots and some more wildlife and other things as well so okay see you soon